Catch me, I'll be on my mission. Be on my mission. Catch me, candid for these lenses. Catch me, one day whipping in these benches. Catch me, catch me, catch me. Catch me, like we playing on, on. Roll one, and you gon' sing along. Hey, sip some, and you gon' get your dance on. Catch me, catch me, catch me, yeah. Drowning in ambition now. Let's do it, yeah. It's like it's, it, it promises to be a great one. Perfection. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Couch Creators. I'm your host, Kevin Jesse Hinges, coming to you with another episode. But today, it's going to be, how can I say, a raw and uncut episode talking about you today. Um, before I get started, let me just introduce this wonderful gentleman on my side here. Yeah. Let's start with Tabo. Tabo, yes. Yes, um, just give us a brief introduction of who you are. I'm a creative artist, I do fashion and photography. That's all Alright, and you know why I came to see Hendrix? Mm -hmm. They're also cultures. So, yeah, let's <laughs> Okay. Yes. Hi, everyone. My name is Sianda Kubokana. However, I'm affectionately uh, known as Sia, and I come from PE, which is now known as Kabeha. And I've been in Cape Town for about seven years uh, in the University of the Western Cape. I'm currently completing my MA Masters in Forensic History. However, I have more other interests in history, especially uh, public history. Um, I have an interest in sound history, the acoustics and uh, so I'm glad to be here. I think it, it, it promises to be a great uh, conversation that I will be having with my fellow brothers in the studio and also it's happening in a very very historic month, mm -hmm. uh, the month of youth day. So thank you very much Couch Creators for inviting me to the show. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Good day everyone, uh, my name is Caleb Shoko, um, I'm an entrepreneur, um, I'm into the signage printing and digital space and um, on the social aspect I'm a pastor so I come from a, a background of dealing with uh, different uh, people, I've been in Cape Town for the past 15 years. So yeah, thank you so much to Carl's Creative for just hosting us yes. uh, in, a, in a special way. Right. Right. Gentlemen, thank you so much for coming here, taking your time on your, you know, it's Thursday. <laughs> it's, it's, youth, it's youth day today. Yeah, yeah. 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 What is youth day to you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it would make sense for you to ask me that question, but I think I would rather start at that the reason why I chose to come here, mm. uh, particularly in a studio called Couch Creators, and I mean I'm an academic, or rather an emerging academic, but I think it would also be important for us to start to think creatively about certain things. So I was very much interested in thinking creatively about the importance of the human. So I think it's important for us to rethink what is it uh, to be a human. And that is why actually I came here. So I've always, I've really been uh, concerned with, with that question because I would like to argue that at times we have lost our humanity and that is why perhaps maybe we have a crisis uh, in, 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 in contemporary South Africa. But when it comes to the youth, I think the, the youth is a particular group of human beings, right? And, and I'm going to speak uh, on the context of the youth that uh, we find today. The youth that we find, find today is a youth that I would like to believe is a youth uh, that is perhaps very much conflicted mm -hmm. because it is a youth that is a product of a very much oppressive past, as we know, apartheid in South Africa. So it is a youth that is coming out of homes of, of parents who had uh, been subjugated and oppressed. So it's a youth that bears imprints of, of oppression, but again, it's a youth that is very much uh, in, a, in a position of being pressurized to do better because uh, apparently right now, you know, things 
uh, you know, accessible or South Africa is free. So it's a youth that uh, bears much uh, uh, responsibilities. A lot is expected from them, from them. But because of those two things, you know, of the history of oppression yeah. and uh, the pressures of the present, this youth is very much depressed. Mm. And therefore, it finds itself in a position really of being uh, secluded from uh, society, you know, and when I say society, the, the, the general public, you know, uh, including those who are old, it might be young, but this particular youth feels as if it's secluded because it's not understood, yeah. right? Because it's a product of this past and the pressures, pressures of, 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 of today. So I think uh, what is very important for us, I think for me to be here, is therefore to try and understand what is it that we can do to ensure that this youth it takes, you know, it's taken away from, you know, the expectations that come with a South Africa that is supposedly, and I need to emphasize it, supposedly free and democratic. Yeah. I think uh, if you are coming from that perspective of saying, mm. do the youth have um, opportunities? I would say, learning opportunities are very vast as compared to what they were in the past. If uh, I'm to to ask you when did Google come into play, when did YouTube come into play. I believe there are so many things that the youth on their own can create, uh -huh. they can see opportunities, it's easy to learn, it's easy to, to diversify. As different as it was maybe in 1976, as we commemorate this day, uh -huh. 1976, the, the youth of then said, we are just tired and we're just going to go out there and do what we have to do. And the only thing that they knew that could bring a voice uh. is by going out there to demonstrate. I've been looking at different platforms, different youth platforms. People are demonstrating in the midst of their homes, mm. sitting on their tablets, sitting on their phone. They can demonstrate, they can do things that in 1976 you couldn't do yeah. when you're sitting yeah. inside your home. So I believe um, there are more opportunities that we can get and venture into mm. uh, as this generation. It just needs uh, a bit of guiding, a bit of uh, people that will be able to be around the young people. I think mentorship is one of those key things that we basically need. Um, in our in our societies and in our in our, in our community in our community so that our youth can be better oh. we can create a better youth by mentoring and developing them everyone i believe needs a coach and needs a teacher so are there opportunities yes they are there are they better than where where they were back then yes they are but at times you cannot see an opportunity if it hasn't been opened for you to see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You just need somebody that will look at you and say, hey, mm -hmm. couch creati creative, why don't you mm -hmm. just do th or go this route and you see a, 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 a big opportunity availing for, for the young people. I believe there is much that we can do mm -hmm. as a community and as a society. Mm. So, looking back 1976 and, be, and, and before that, um, there are things that were not accessible uh. in terms of um, communication because I believe that communication is one of those key things that can uh, open up and close up any society. Mm. Sure. I think, uh, sorry, I, I just also think that uh, Caleb is correct. Especially when he makes the comparison to the youth of 1976. I think one of the other things that we as the youth of today have forgotten is that these things, such as opportunities, don't come easy. Uh, the, the, the civic energy that existed with the youth of 1976 was an energy of, of struggle, of, of, of confronting the powers that be. So it was a proactive youth fighting against a very oppressive system. 
and if you want to then ask whether if we are being given more opportunities for today I, I would ask you are we really fighting for more opportunities or rather waiting uh, for someone to give us that you know and and again I think it's important to to have agencies that create spaces for these opportunities but unfortunately life is not like that mm. you need to be very And then someone, sometimes you are given an opportunity when you show hunger for it. Mm. Um, I'm not saying that this generation is, oh, we are not hungry, but I feel like there is a lack of determination somewhere. And perhaps maybe, I don't know what causes it. Mm. Um, but my, my, my own analysis is that that hunger mm. that was shown by the class of 1976 is missing. And perhaps maybe we need that. Mm. Yeah, maybe, maybe, okay. maybe, maybe if, I, if I'm to ask you, uh, currently, a child in Lavender Hill, where there's gun shooting when they're in class, where they have to hide under uh, the benches during a school lesson. Uh, they're traumatized. Parents have to come and pick kids, and uh, cl class is disrupted for the next three, four days. Um, and then you look at a child that is going to a school in Constantia where uh, they've got Chromebooks at their disposal, they've got uh, a, a, a coach, they've got a psychiatrist, a psychologist, they've got um, a social worker mm. at their disposal. Mm and um, somebody that is ready to assist the kids that are that that, that are lagging behind a mentor. so a, a, a mentor who's yeah. a teacher the the job is just to help the kid mm -hmm. the, the, the these the, these mentors they sit down and just help the kids mm -hmm. that are lagging behind that's their job mm -hmm. would you say uh, the schools are equal <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. you know no no mm -hmm. Would you say when they get to grade 12, they'll produce this uh, 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 at Patrick? Okay. No. So, so let me understand this. Do you think that what's lacking in these institutions is mentorship? No, it's not mentorship. It's the resources. It's resources. The resources it's, are not the same. It's resources, and particularly yeah. it's the incapability of the current government mm. to resolve the historical question mm. of... The, the inequality that comes from I'm not trying to center myself around the past of apartheid <laughs> and colonialism and say that no everything is because of that but let us let us be frank and let's be honest mm. bulk, bulk of these problems at the center at the root was because of, of, of white people coming to to, to, to to the continent and particularly South Africa and dividing people Amongst each, other. amongst each other and then creating classes according to race mm. so there is a deep racial question that is, is, is that is imposed also mm. on this problem that we find ourselves in so you say it's still happening today amongst the youth it's, it's, uh, it's, it's still uh, there yeah. because and by the way it is not something that is spoken in dinner tables yeah. you just need to drive you just need to drive from here to Kailicha there are uh, when was the last time um, you have seen uh, people of a different race in Zolis or in, in Nyanga? Mm. It's easy for people that are down to try to go up, but it's difficult for people that are, go, that are up yeah. Yeah. to go down. Yeah. A good analogy is uh, it can be very difficult for them to go and take a stroll in Nyanga but it will be very easy for them to go shark diving. Hmm. What, is more <laughs> <laughs> what is more dangerous? A shark or Mzolis? Exactly. <laughs> it's, it's, I think, I think it's, it's, an, it's an interesting, you know, Caleb is saying something that is profound. I think I would want to comment on the part of change, if mm. there's been change. And I want to also take it back to what I said about the importance of urgency, of that change sometimes exists within the individual. And I think the youth must also start understanding that. Because back in 2018, 
me and a couple of other students at the University of Western Cape. In fact, we started asking ourselves the question, what is it that a university like the University of the Western Cape, what can a university like a, uni a University of the Western Cape do as it finds its, itself surrounded by Cape Flats, you know, and you know the history around what can we do to try and intervene into pro pro uh, the problems of the community because we, we understood that before we were students, we, we are members of the community. So we created something like adopt a matriculant program mm -hmm. from 2018 where we, as especially us students, black students who came from other areas mm -hmm. like the mm -hmm. Cape Flats, yes. decided to go to the schools and become mentors and tutors mm -hmm. and adopt perhaps three or four students that we would become you know, a, a mentor and a tutor to. Mm -hmm. you know, we did that. Mm -hmm did not succeed well, mm. but at least there was a change of, of mindset yes. to some students. And some of those students now are at the university mm. and they've graduated. Small change mm. yeah. that has resulted into a bigger, bigger change. That's, that's exact. I think that's the point where we need to come back, come back to as the youth of today to, to ensure that there is some change. You know? I've got a, a very good friend of mine. He's called Bradley Van Renen. He is he, he's not. Um, he's, a, he's a great cons, concept type and strategist. Mm -hmm. He came up with a concept called "I'm Passion." They are, they've got offices in Mitchell's Plain. Their major role that they do is to mentor young exactly. people. So they take young people from all walks of life and they begin to work with them. And imagine these are. Um, some of the kids from uh, the Cape Flats, mm. um, you know, if you are to ask uh, um, a kid what you want to be when you grow up, uh, normally the answer that you mm. you you see. you get mm. is what they are acquainted yes, to. Yeah. So if you ask kids from other communities, they'll tell you, "I want to be a policeman, mm. a nurse." A teacher or a doctor because they've been taken to the doctor's office so they want to be a doctor they don't know anything about being an astronaut being a being a, a physician being they, they, they don't know the reason why they don't know is they've never been exposed mm. to it and we I believe we need a people that will then expose opportunities that uh, you can be a pharmacist you can be a footballer you can be an athlete, professional, you can be a professional dancer, you can be a professional creative, you can be a professional uh, fashion person, you can be a professional designer, you can be whosoever you want to be. You know, if you look uh, some jobs that we, um, we, that we currently have now, we're not there 10 years ago. We didn't have a social media analyst. Somebody, we didn't, we, we, have, we had data capturers. Not analysts of data. Yeah, analysts of data. <laughs> so, so yeah, they're, 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 so the we have content creator. Yes. Yeah. So we only have like photographers. Yes. So now we have those. So, so what, what am I saying? Is there is more that uh, is coming for our youth ahead of us. Mm -hmm. There is there are more opportunities. Some jobs that we currently have now, they will be coming to extinction in the coming five to ten years because they are they are irrelevant um uh, uh, out if you look at the uh, at the life cycle of phones when when when, when we started we we're using nokia big one break yeah, sony ericsson yeah but uh, currently what it could do was just to phone and receive messages you have one game the snake game that you play that was all that it could do but currently a phone is what is a necessity to everyone it's your calendar it's it's basically everything so we are developing just like as a phone developed from a dial to a hands-free to we are developing i believe our youth if in the in the hands of right, right. men mm. they can be molded from a 3310 to yes. opportunities that mm we do not know and to create opportunities so i believe it's for uh, my, my, my thought is what is it that cows creative can do exactly. what is it that sia can do in in his space mm. as a 
as a person mm. in in his field what is it that you can do Tabo. I, Tabo, in your in your content area as a fashion person yeah. what is it that i can do to develop to show them that this can happen i believe in 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 the past we used to have what we call mentorship or apprentice mm. where i take somebody into my work environment and begin to teach them what i do the question that we kind of have to pose or rather i think the realization that we need to come to in, come into is that at, the, at this moment in time we have a leadership crisis you can't be a lead you can't be a mentor if you are not a leader leading your own life primarily yeah. leading a, i'm talking about leading a very inspiring life you know um because i grew up i grew up in the township where we idealized soccer players because mm -hmm. on, on Sundays we used to have Sunday uh, soccer tournaments and the best player there we would you know we would watch the best player and come back and talk amongst each other and say yo that guy you know I want to be like him because the guy is leading a very great uh, life in terms of his lifestyle outside of football is healthy inside so we want so I think we kind of need to have the, the right leaders but then I think there is a leadership vacuum uh, that is lacking somewhere but there are brilliant men and women mm -hmm. who can provide mentorship and leadership mm -hmm. however they've also there's also been a gatekeeping on them by these bad apples if I can call it, call it that there's been there's been an emergence of incompetency in government and in certain state institutions where corrupt individuals and incompetent individuals are occupying seats that they are not qualified for. And we've seen that through the, the, the government of the ANC by introducing things like leadership deployment, etc. You, 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 if a society is like that, it's not, if a society is not based on merit, and not giving the best job to the best man for it, then that society will not uh, reflect a good leadership profile for those behind them. You know, so I think we must start. Uh, we must start uh, creating excellence amongst, you know, the people that are leading us first and foremost. I think we must start getting the right people for the, for the job, and those people are going to reflect excellence and the young people are going to, to learn from that you know until then i think there's going to be a problem that's 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 my own two two cents mm -hmm. maybe uh one of the challenges that we we have is that uh, we go back to the educational system that we we're talking about that it is uh, the system that creates uh people into different facets uh if you look at uh, academics we put them into running academics uh, but the would, is that the best way that they can give back into 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 society no uh, if somebody is good in business yeah. we he becomes a ceo he starts his own if they start their own enterprise is that the best that they can do no and uh, very few of those uh will then say politics is not for a, B, C, D, E people, but it is the same politicians or political people that will go and make decisions for, uh, yeah. or on your behalf. So we have got um, the grade A or the, the, the grade A students being managed by grade C students. Uh that those that have got the courage and the passion and the, the guts are the ones that are now venture into politics <laughs> but the majority of those they are not the the, the cream mm. in terms of the, the academic uh, standards so i believe uh, it calls on them on the or, or, or on the best of the best to to occupy if we had um uh the best person uh in terms of business development and uh, concept development and uh in terms of uh, enterprise running the the, the ministry of uh, enterprise mm. he knows what he's talking about he's he's been there he's walked the 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 journey it's always different when we compare theory versus the practical mm. you can have uh, you you can the reason why all our doctors 
uh, they, they do a certain number of years in a certain number of years in the hospital is because you can't graduate without the practical. Exactly. But we've got more managers that have graduated and they don't have the practical and they come and they sit in an office. But they're, they're not practically clued on what is going on. Yeah. They've got the they've got the the paper but they don't have the experience so uh, most people will then say we need experience so most of our young people if they are willing and keen to say i need to be developed i need to be mentored into uh, the sphere of where i think i've got more passion to do those things that i love yeah. you don't currently when we choose a career we choose a career by where or where the money is we'll ask cows creative where is the money uh, is it in creating content so i want to be a content creator but i don't love creating content i don't i don't love sitting behind the computer uh, or I'll, uh, I'll say i i i love being with people hmm. but uh being a, an a, an engineer is paying more so i'll go do engineering not because i want because I, 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 I got uh, uh, flying colors, but I don't love what I'm going to do. So we have people that um, miss, uh, misplaced. Misplaced, misplaced because of where the money is. Mm -hmm. It should not be where the money is. It should be where your heart is. I think that's very important. It's important for us to have the right mentors mm -hmm. and the right people in the right places but equally so it's important for us as this just like the, the, the youth of 1976 where, where, where they were fighting for a new society it's important for us to start reimagining a new society where it won't be structured around the question of profits or around the you know the frameworks of capitalism because it's basically that's i mean the reason why if, if you look i mean i'm from a university the reason why there is a crisis in the humanities and the short social sciences and the arts is because uh the businesses are not asking for those people the businesses are asking for people who are uh, skilled in, 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 in accounting, mm. you know, and, and all of yeah, all of these uh, you know lucrative and, and employ employ and employable uh, disciplines. So I think it's it's important for us to then restructure our society, yeah. and 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 that job, by the way, uh, requires years of struggle. Mm. And if we are not starting to reimagine another society. Because I don't think this one is working for, for all of us, mm. you know. I it only benefits a few. Mm. So we need to really create a society where people really can be themselves. But who, who and society and is it? This one that you are in right now. Who society is it? Is it, it? Did we come up with the society for ourselves or did someone implant it and see into our society? That into Ex ex exactly my point. This society that we are in right now was reimagined and defined by those people mm. who were capitalists. Mm. They created it. Mm. So we need to go back to so in order ourselves. Can, uh, uh, can, I, can I ask a question or, or a question that we need to ponder on? Um, do you tell me that uh, people that are athletes have got the same, yeah, will do the same in terms of grades with academics? No. But when I go to school, I need to, to score uh, 50 plus in order for me to pass mm. as, a, as an athlete. But if I take an academic and put him into, into let's say, into, into, into the sports field or into the creative space and say, we are all, we are, we are going to judge you mm. according to your creativity. And then the, uh, one of those people is going to be rendered stupid. Then, then one of those people mm. is going to be r rendered invalid. Mm. You, I, I'm saying in every sphere. So we need to, to, to come up with a, with a system that will be mm. able to accommodate, to accommodate mm. people and to group them according to the skill set. Exactly. To, 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 to skills, mm. to skill set. Mm. Creatives have to be mentored by creatives. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, people that are engineers by engineers. Mm -hmm. Academics by like academics. I feel like we don't have the infrastructure installed in our society to accommodate those um, mentorship programs. Mm -hmm. the, question, the question of infrastructure, just to jump in, mm -hmm. is not a question of 
I don't think of infrastructure in terms of the physical presence of institutions mm -hmm. to to create this mantle to maintain relationship. The infrastructure is in the head. Yeah, but I There's a mental resource that we have as human beings that we need to use and utilize. Yeah. For example, we we didn't have an infrastructure when we started the the adopt and matriculant program. It was a bunch of students coming from previously disadvantaged Sh communities Sh moms. Yeah. who wanted to make a difference in another disadvantaged community. It's, yeah. You know, how but, you but, but, like minded individuals to help you to achieve your goals. But if nobody sees any vision, like I mean the physical infrastructure there to like have a pinpoint, like a target to like to see where we're going to. Like, and, and just having it in our minds is gonna be like just going with the flow, you know. You just go mm. with the flow guys and just see how we can help people out. But mm. if we have it structure that we can just like okay. hold models that we can like place individuals and you will be doing this part and you can do doing this so we can see where we all fit in the in the tree. Do you know uh, if we talk of infrastructure, we 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 said we are coming uh, from a background where society is not equal. Mm. Our society is not equal. It's not equal. Mm -hmm. We have got uh, the worker and the boss. Mm. It's not equal. We have got people that have got different gifts and mm. talents. Mm. So what we just need to do is to identify people that are different from me and say, you know what, I cannot do what Callum is doing from Cows Creative because he's uh, into the social space that I cannot be in. I cannot be an academic. I'm not into, into media. So if I find somebody that has got, uh, or, 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 or a youth that has got something or that are aligned to what you are doing, why don't I bring them to you to say, Kellam, can you mentor them? Or if I, go to, if I find a youth that is um, more inclined to academics, then I say, see, ya, this is unlike me, this is like you. Mm. So birds of the same feather, have to flock so, together. So, so it's Sia that has yeah. to mentor yeah, yeah. that type of a person. Mm. So the challenge is we want to mentor everyone, mm. but we're not meant yeah. for everyone. Yeah. Let's look at uh, 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 let's look at the, the the type of people that we have, mm. the type of gifts and talents that they have, and then we say this person we have got one, two, three, four, five that is good at one, two, three, four, five, and then we place people in in, in those categories. Yes, uh, the person might not be what Sia is doing, but they are an academic. Mm. They will find a place that they find each other. Sia will be able to say, okay, you know, you, you want to specialize in psychology. Great. This is how you study. This is how you develop. These are the subjects that you need to pass. This is how you can do it. If it's somebody that is uh, in a physical field like athletics, they'll tell him, this is how you practice, this is how you eat, because there's a different diet for different people. So if we understand that we don't even know what we ought to eat in order to build up muscle as an athlete. So I, I, I'm just talking, uh, what enhances creativity? Mm. Uh, if uh, somebody who's creative will say, for me, what works is maybe meditation. Mm. And this and this and this. This what works for me. It creates that space for me to, to be creative. For somebody to say, no, it's working. But when you are a group of people that are in a certain area, you can be able to then come up with ways or develop people that have got the, the same type of, uh, of a skill. So I believe it's in us understanding who we are, what we have, and taking stock of those talents, then developing them from there and creating uh, the right channel of, of, of mentors. Catch me, I'll be on my mission. Catch me, can it for this latest self? Catch me one day whipping in his dentist. Catch me, catch me, catch me. Catch me, like we playing on, on. Roll one, and you gon' sing along. Hey, sip some, and you gon' get your dance on. Catch me, catch me, catch me, yeah. Drowning in ambition now.